Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on SynthCell, the new instrument in Pro Tools 2022.04. Now, SynthCell is a really nice, efficient, intuitive, subtractive synthesis instrument. Now, if you're new to synthesis, the idea of subtractive synthesis is one of the most basic approaches that are used in many different types of instruments. And the idea is that we generate tones using different waveforms, and then we subtract and carve away frequencies using the filter. And then we modulate different parameters to create movement using either envelopes or LFOs or real-time input like mod wheel or MIDI controllers. And then we run it through an amp envelope stage to control the shape of each note. And then we have built-in effects to process the sound. That's the simple two or three line definition. That's the big picture. And in this first video, I just want to give you a quick kind of overview of where things are laid out. Now, SynthCell is a 32 voice subtractive synthesis instrument. So we get up to 32 voices and we set the number of polyphony and number of voices here in this max polyphony field. And we can go anywhere from one all the way up to 32. Now, it's got two oscillators. We have the first oscillator over here, and that lets you mix six different waveforms together, including a noise generator and a sub oscillator. So we can create the raw tone we're working with by mixing the tones together. And then there's a second oscillator that we can use to mix in sawtooth and pulse waveforms. There's pulse width modulation, and we can fine tune that. We'll go over all this in detail, but the idea is we set a basic sound or tone to work with with these two oscillators and the way they interact together also influences the outcome of how the two are blended. And just to give you a little example, I have a simple bass part programmed up and I'll turn some of these knobs and you'll hear the timbre of the tone changing. and so on. Now we have filters and filter one over here processes the output of both oscillators one and two, and it's off right now in this preset. And then we have filter two, which is applied to the signal path after filter one. And this will filter frequencies based on the amount that we have set here for the cutoff frequency. And then we can boost right around that cutoff point. And you see, as I turn that knob, it gives us that nasal kind of sound. So that's an example of something you might want to modulate so that there's movement in that parameter. Now we have a filter envelope that's specifically designed to modulate the cutoff frequency in the filters. And it can be applied to filters one and two separately. We have this envelope amount knob here for each of the two filters. And it's used to determine how much the filter envelope is going to affect the cutoff frequency of the filter. So for example, it's pretty static. If I dial it up, based on this attack, we'll hear that bending into the cutoff frequency. We'll explore all this in more detail. And just to cover the rest of the instrument, the bottom has two panels. We have this keyboard view here and we can control virtually the pitch bend and or mod wheel here and it'll respond to mod wheel movements on my keyboard. But we can also toggle it with an arpeggiator. It's an eight step arpeggiator with all the usual parameters you'd expect and a nice selection of different directions and some unique ones that make this an interesting arpeggiator to use. I'll just toggle back to the keyboard. We have global controls here that apply to the whole instrument. In addition to the polyphony, we can set the range of the pitch bend. And this is really interesting. The mod wheel can be hardwired to control different parameters. Right now it's controlling vibrato. That's the amount. But I can also have it control panning. So as I move my mod wheel, see it moving there. And that's the speed, tremolo. That's really interesting. And we can also assign it to a low pass filter or high pass filter for a global kind of filtering effect. 
Now we have glide control so we can get pitch transitions between notes. When it's off, we get a clean transition. But we can have a pitch bend between them based on the amount. We have the usual monophonic modes available, legato, polyphonic, and re-trigger for how multiple voices interact with the glide parameter. We'll explore all this in more detail later, just giving you the big picture. And we can fine tune the overall tuning of the instrument. And on the top, we have volume meters and also a volume slider here. And we can jump to the second page. This is the main page with all the main parameters. And the second page has effects, which are very simple and intuitive, simple power button, choice of some presets and algorithms and a few simple controls. Now back on the main page, we have some modulation possibilities. We have the amp envelope to shape each note over time. And we have an LFO that we can use to modulate with various shapes. And again, this is just a big picture. We'll go over it all in detail. And we have another separate envelope, two-stage envelope with a lot of interesting kind of variations that we can use to modulate any of the parameters. And then we have this modulation matrix that we use to assign the routings. So we click here for modulation source. We can use any of these. And here's our modulation LFO and modulation envelope. And then we assign it to a destination parameter to modulate. And we dial in the amount we want. And we can also right click and MIDI learn these knobs for real time MIDI control. For example, I'll go learn MIDI CC and I'll move a knob on my controller. And you'll see it's assigned now for a real time kind of live input type of modulation. I'm going to right click and we can see the assignment that's been made and I can remove it. So that's the big picture. If you're experienced with synthesis already, you can jump in, start tweaking knobs and making sounds. It's very intuitive. And if you're just starting out, have no worries. We're going to break things down one knob at a time starting in the next video.